Welcome to the Sharkpreneur Podcast with Kevin Harrington and Seth Green. Kevin Harrington is the inventor of the infomercial, one of the original sharks from the hit TV show Shark Tank, and has generated over $5 billion in TV and digital direct response sales. Seth Green is the world's first trusted authority on cutting edge direct response marketing, a best-selling author, and the only three-time Marketer of the Year nominee. On the podcast, Kevin and Seth interview sharkpreneurs who share straight talk on what it takes to explode your business. Why do so many businesses struggle while others seem to explode overnight? Do you wish you had the secret to this type of exponential growth? Now, I've scaled more than 20 businesses to over $100 million, and it's not just luck. In my new book with Mark Tim, Mentor to Millions, you'll learn the repeatable framework I use in all my business ventures for massive success. Order at KevinMentor.com and get over $1,000 in bonuses. Head to KevinMentor.com. Welcome to the podcast. This is your host, Seth Green. Today, I've got the good fortune of me interviewing Joe Sanok from practiceofthepractice.com. Joe, thanks so much for joining us. Oh, Seth, thanks so much for having me. All right, so let's go back in time a little bit because you've had some transitions through your career that have sort of taken you to where you are now. How'd you get started? Yeah, I had a really traditional route where I went to undergrad and grad school in counseling and psychology did your typical kind of work at a nonprofit, community mental health, eventually landed the golden handcuffs of working at a community college, you know, the highest paid counseling job out there uh, at probably 60 grand a year. And then I started a side gig counseling practice just to just pay off student loan debt. Uh, But then over time, started a podcast to learn about all the marketing and business that I hadn't learned in grad school and found that that full-time job really wasn't where my passion was, that it was in helping people individually through the counseling practice, or then, you know, through the podcast, I started doing uh, consulting and helping other people start, grow, and scale their private practices. So over time, it just continued to grow. Uh, It was the first podcast about the business of private practice. So right away, I was number one. (laughs) And uh, from there, really just started to look at my own schedule and look at how other people's view of work when they worked fewer hours, they actually were getting more done. Okay, so I know the longer version of the story, that didn't do it justice. I know the longer version's in the books. So let's break it down just a little bit. I, you said something really fascinating. You said a lot, but you said, I started a podcast to learn the things about business and marketing I didn't know. Tell me more about that. Yeah. You know, I figured that because I wasn't an expert in running a private practice that to really just publicly learn, uh, to read a book and say, here's how I'm applying it. The rest of you tell me what you're doing uh, to, to have the idea that I never had the corner market on knowledge and that really as a community, uh, I would learn much faster. You know, with podcasting, at least for myself, I've had access to just some top talent that if I sent an email to him and said, hey, can I pick your brain, Kevin Harrington? No, like Kevin would never do that. But then he'd be a you know guest on my show and, and to be able to live pick his brain or live pick other people's brains uh, has been a great way to get access to people. But then also over time, you slowly shift from just being the learner uh, to really then being the expert in your field. And and so over time, I realized, whoa, a lot of this interviewing has become second nature for me to take what they've taught me and to then apply it to the world of private practice. So then I kind of moved from just being a co-learner to then being able to be a consultant and then offering more to my community. Awesome. Tell me a little bit, because you achieved some tremendous results. Tell me a little bit about how, what you learned on the podcast improved your own private practice? Yeah, so the biggest thing that I learned is how slowing down actually speeds things up. Uh, that, That when we give ourselves less time, so Parkinson's law talks about how work expands to the time given. So a lot of people know that. But the practicality of that is most private practitioners, most people that I consult with, don't really live that. They work 50, 60 hours a week. They think that the hustle culture is what they need to do. But instead, when I see people really shrink their schedule and then allow themselves to be creative and have that downtime, they're putting their best time into the best areas instead of just you know running full tilt in every area. And so for me, that's been the game changer because if I'm only putting my time into the best things, 
then that becomes a multiplier. I can't send my executive assistant to come hang out with you and do this interview. I have to show up for those most important details. But then when I'm limiting my time, I'm naturally dropping the ball on other areas. So that gives me data then on saying, I need to outsource this. I need to move this over to a category where somebody else is responsible for these things, or even to just say, I'm going to totally eliminate this. That, that's great advice. I love that you picked that up. What were some of the financial results? Because they were quite significant in terms of how much your revenue increased by your application of what you learned. Yeah. So early on, it was a side gig to pay off student loans. So we were looking at like a thousand bucks a month uh, was what I was bringing in. Uh, and then over time, uh, that's, you know, depending on the month, 50 to 100K a month now. Uh, and so to be able to really look at well, how do you focus in on that, that area of genius? I mean, lots of people talk about that, but, but how do you actually use time as an experiment to zoom in on that exact method that you want to focus on? So for example, one year I said, my counseling is 150 an hour. If I could just get one or two consulting clients that are at 300 an hour, that would be a big step forward. And so I focused on that for a year. The next year it was, I want to have some small mastermind groups of six to eight people, each paying 500 bucks a month. We get together a couple of times a month. So then I'm going from one-on-one -on -one to one-to-many. And then the next year it was, hey, I really want to focus on a membership community that helps people start and grow their private practices. So hundred bucks a month, we've got over 300 people in that membership community. Now I have predictable income on a regular basis that's based on my time, but also on the different features that we offer. And then, you know, in late 2018, it was, if I can get a traditionally published book through a Harper Collins and become a New York Times bestseller, you know, that's going to open doors. So always having that small section uh, that is, is sort of the gamble, but then continually automating things as much as I can outside of my own time. Um, when you do that over and over, uh, those gambles start to add up over time. I love that you're building on it. You're taking what you've got um, and you're adding something new. It sounds like a new, new stream, new passive revenue every single year. Um, how did the book come about? Yeah. So, uh, I worked actually with a writing coach for a year to really focus in on what were people buying? Uh, what's the industry like I was brand new. So I hired an expert to teach me and, and talk me through that. Uh, so my writing coach, she is a former Harper Collins editor. She used to, um, kind of be a producer for all sorts of Broadway shows and just a well-versed lady. And, and she got me talking every Thursday we would meet for a year and it felt like, what are we doing here? I'm this high achiever that wants to get things done. And she just get me talking. And she was really parsing out. What are the things that are unique to Joe? What do you teach people? It's not just regurgitating something that other people do. And over and over, it came back to this slowing down and then speeding up time um, using the neuroscience to help people really figure out where their best use of time is and doing that over and over. And that's where we really landed on that the four day work week was something I had lived for a long time and was teaching people how to live and how to reshape society towards that. That is fantastic. Now all you gotta do is combine the four day work week with the four hour work week. Yeah, know, right, and right. <laughs> right, and then you're all set. You've been featured on the Huffington Post, Forbes, Reader's Digest, Yahoo News, a whole bunch of other things. Um, how did all of the, how did the media attention happen? Yeah, you know, early on, uh, I used a website called Help a Reporter Out, uh, which is just an amazing place where top reporters are saying, hey, I need experts in the following areas. And I think oftentimes counselors, psychologists, therapists don't think of themselves as experts. Uh, but really, I just started pitching people over and over. Uh, and then once I made a couple of those media contacts, you know, you don't really think about it, but uh, people level up in their career. And so I had the cell phones of all these uh, different reporters. And just every couple months would text them and say, hey, I don't know if you need anything last minute, but uh, just as a reminder, here's a couple of the areas that, that I can give last minute quotes on. And more times than not, it was someone that had a deadline that afternoon and said, hey, I need three quick quotes about Valentine's Day and psychological aspects. Uh, can I do this for Cosmo Magazine? Or um, you know, to do all these different media appearances happened through Help a Reporter Out, but then developing those relationships with the media over time. Yeah, we love Harrow. Peter Shankman's been a guest on the show. That's fantastic. Now, you've written multiple books. Um, talk a little bit about, I know your writing journey has evolved since uh, working with your writing coach. Talk a little bit about that process, how it looks today. 
Yeah. So early on, it was really self-publishing to make sure that I was connecting with my audience and producing some self-published eBooks and other books. Uh, but now that journey is, is much different. Uh, I really looked into what it takes to write a New York Times bestseller. And it's interesting to look at the percentage breakdown of just like thinking about this as a formula. Typically about 40% of the book is research and hard evidence. About 40% of a book is case studies and stories. Uh, and then about 20% of the book is just you know, taking out, here's the main points of each chapter. So when I kind of broke it down that way, uh, I started with a Trello board and just said chapter by chapter, what's the main kind of point or thought for the chapter? What are the two to three pieces of evidence for that chapter? What are the two to three different stories for that chapter? And what are my main points that I want people to walk away with? If they were to just in one sentence say, this chapter about curiosity is about what? What would I want them to say? And, and so then thinking about each of those kind of structures and each week uh, I would sketch out on a whiteboard from that Trello board. I needed to pull it off the screen and just kind of look at it. And then I would start from scratch and say, well, what comes to mind? So for example, the, the chapter that on the internal inclination of curiosity, uh, what came to mind? I, I wrote down curiosity killed the cat. And then I'm like, where did that come from? So then I went down the rabbit hole of you know, where did that come from? And in 1910, it was the front page headline of the Washington Post uh, because this cat got stuck in a chimney and it made national news and it ended up dying. And that becomes something that we now say. And so just finding these unique stories that, that give it some color. So on the days that I would write every Thursday, uh, I would first protect my brain. So I made sure that I didn't look at texts. I didn't look at the news. I didn't look at email before I started writing. I would make sure I had a healthy, strong breakfast. So I didn't you know, have my stomach growling. I had my green tea and my coffee ready to go. And then I would set up my office to trigger my brain to get into a flow state. So I'm using the neuroscience that I'm learning in the book to apply to the writing of the book. And so even something like changing the lighting in my office to move my chair from where it is now right behind me to a different part of the office, uh, to have my computer in a different spot. And I even had a separate uh, pair of headphones that I would put on that I only wore when I was writing and had a very specific writing playlist that I had on Spotify. And so I very quickly would get into that flow state to write a chapter a week uh, and to really be able to dive into it. And so that neuroscience of triggering my brain to say, now it's writing time. Our brains still are really old. They have not evolved to keep up with the technology. So we can trick it to do more than what we typically expect to do. That is awesome. I love your pra I love the practice that you put through in the routine that you've set up. You've achieved so much success. What is your biggest challenge now? Yeah, I think that uh, right now it's just when I enter into anything new. So the, this book, uh, for example, uh, I'm such a person that wants to know the end goal. I want to know the end success and then what's going to be next. And so really learning to sit within something with uncertainty. This is, this is the gamble. I'm writing this book. I'm doing over 200 media appearances, making sure that I leave these doors open. Uh, but I'm continually learning that the outcome is not what I need to focus on. I need to focus on that present moment right now, showing up for every interview prepared and energized and making sure my body is full of green smoothie and you know feeling good. Uh, and so my biggest challenge really is to, that push and pull that I think every entrepreneur deals with of not getting too far ahead of yourself and saying, right now, I'm in a phase of sprinting to promote the book and we'll see what doors open, but I'll address those doors when I get to those doors. Right now, I need to just show up here and not worry about what happens after this big sprint around the book. That makes a lot of sense. Your passion is obvious. What do you like best about what you're doing? You know, I feel like we're deconstructing time. Uh, you know, when I started this book, I didn't even have in, uh, in the proposal that I was going to look at where even the seven day work week came from. So right at the beginning, it's like, where the heck do we even get seven days? Or, you know, this, where did this concept of time come from? Because, you know, the earth goes around the sun, that's a year, um, you know, a day spins, but there's nothing in nature that says seven days. And so even discovering that the Babylonians literally just made up the seven day week. Uh, the Egyptians used to have an eight day week, the Romans had a 10 day week. So even this thing that feels so secure, the seven day week was completely made up by the Babylonians. And, and then to look back to 1926, when Henry Ford started the 40 hour work week, to sell more cars. He, he believed that people wouldn't buy a car if they just were going to get to work faster. But if they had a weekend, they'd buy cars. So it was to sell more Fords to Ford employees. So it's so exciting to me to say, okay, we're post-pandemic or post-first pandemic, however we phrase this. Um, 
but we get to decide we are this generation that gets to reinvent what time looks like in the same way the Babylonians and Henry Ford said, we don't like it this way. We want to change it. We get to do that right now. That is fantastic. I love it. Um, you're, you're doing amazing work. Uh, we're huge fans. Love what you're doing for our viewers and our listeners who want to learn more. Where is the best place for them to go to learn more about you and the book? Yeah. So the best place to learn about me is over at joesanok.com. We have a whole section there for experiments so that as people do four day work weeks where they're trying things and experimenting with it, we know this is not going to be a prescription. That's how the industrialists thought this is going to be organic and it's going to evolve. And we want to share people's stories of what works. So people are submitting their experiments there on the four day work week. Um, you can also contact me there. If you're hosting a book club that's open to the public, you can put that up there as well. So joesanok.com, it's where that whole community is uh, and all of my keynote speaking. Uh, and then to get the book, wherever you get books, uh, if, you, if that's your local bookstore, if that's Amazon, Thursday is the new Friday is the book. Uh, if you buy five or 10, we have some bonuses in regards to some e-courses. We've got a live mastermind group that we're doing that you can submit your receipt over at Thursday is the new Friday.com. Awesome. This has been Seth Green with Joe Sanek. Joe, thanks so much for joining us. Thanks so much, Seth. Thanks everybody for watching or listening. We will see you or talk to you next time. Do you need money to fund your idea, product, or service? Are you ready to take your business to the next level but need capital to get it done? Kevin Harrington has heard more than 50,000 pitches and knows how to help you make the perfect pitch to get the funding for your entrepreneurial dream. He's distilled the process down in his perfect pitch cheat sheet, and it's yours for free. Just text PITCH to him right now at 727-888-2100. Text PITCH to 727-888-2100 right now and claim your free perfect pitch cheat sheet. Text PITCH to 727-888-2100 to start funding your dream today. This show has been produced by Market Domination, LLC. To discover how you can have your own show completely done for you and turn it into a real published book and become the authority in your marketplace, go to www.marketdominationllc.com slash podcast offer.